Did you know you can play as Quiet and Ocelot in MGS5's FOB missions? Quiet has access to her powers like Super Dash and Sprint, turning invisible if you stay idle for a short period of time, which makes hiding from enemies that much cooler. Has no recoil when shooting sniper rifles and even uses unique CQC animations that make her butterfly markings show for a brief moment. But you can't grab enemies and interrogate them since she can't speak, so she just grunts instead. Don't shoot! Though Ocelot gets his own unique voice lines for interrogating enemies. Talk. Hands up. Don't shoot! Spit it out. But he is a bit slower when it comes to movement animations because he's a cowboy and Venom can upgrade these skills via bionic arm improvements. In fact, most of Ocelot's animations are identical to Venom's with Quiet getting a lot more new ones. But both of these characters do get unique victory animations for completing FOB missions. Sadly though, you can't change their skins or play them outside of FOB missions. So next time you see a cardboard box on Mother Base, it might not be Snake. But this is just the first of many any other cool details found across MGS5's unique skins and gameplay. Looking at Venom Snake's naked skin variants shows a lot of scarring from the helicopter crash. But he's missing the snake shaped scar that Big Boss had during Peace Walker. Though, this isn't another small difference between the real snakes. In fact, this scar actually belonged to the boss. After she got wounded in the gut on the battlefield and was about to give birth, they had to take the child out from her body, leaving the massive snake shaped scar. And although I got no idea how it eventually turned into a real snake at the end of MGS3, Big Boss. Boss's scar in Peace Walker is a fake imitation. Decorating your body with her memory. But he does this to hide a jigsaw inside it, which he uses in naked situations like to escape Strange Love's prison cell. This scar is also included on the boss's skin in the Phantom Pain. Speaking of which. Both the boss and Naked Snake sneaking suits from MGS3 mirror each other because they're developed by the Soviets, which is why Snake finds it in the weapons lab of Grozny Grad. These were the first prototypes of the sneaking suit, taking inspiration from astronaut gear, but had bulletproof fabric for added protection and these compressors that help stop bleeding. These eventually became the inspiration for MSF's SV sneaking suit some 10 years later, which looks like a mix of the previous versions and the one Solid Snake used in MGS3. MGS2. Though it wasn't until Diamond Dog's sneaking suit in the 80s where it started resembling Solid Snake's version from Shadow Moses, including a shock absorption vest, most probably to protect Venom's already sensitive head shrapnel, while Solid's vest uses polythermo technology for advanced heat insulation. It's so cool that MGS5 includes most of the sneaking suits across the games, including Solid Snake from MGS1, which you unlock by completing the Deja Vu mission in Ground Zeroes. This skin is sort of become a meme over the years, even appearing in merchandise like the one sent to us from today's sponsor. Mecha Japan. Mecha Japan is an online store that sells rare items exclusively released in Japan from big franchises like Pokemon, Star Wars, Metal Gear Solid, and much more. Products like this rare Nendoroid figure of Solid Snake that even comes with the pixelated head from the original games I mentioned earlier. This awesome figure, along with a Raiden Nendoroid, is getting a re-release which you can pre-order on Mecha Japan's website using the link in the description and pinned comment. And for the next two weeks, this link Link will give you $10 off your first purchase for orders over $100. Mecha Japan also ships worldwide so that you can grab your slice of Japan from anywhere, anytime. The Parasite Suit has no special properties until you equipped one of the three canisters containing different powers of the skull. The Armored Parasite gives you the same body protection as seen on the enemy skulls, which is probably the coolest and my personal favorite out of the three. The Mist Parasite just covers the area in mist without turning everyone into Zombozos, which is kinda useless, but the Camouflage Parasite lets you turn invisible like quiet, though enemies can still hear you so watch out. Although these powers are pretty cool, I just wish you didn't have to constantly collect their respective skulls to refill the canisters. Especially since they introduced an active camo prototype in the game, and using it with the sneaking suit basically outperforms the skull's camouflage. Plus, although Raiden's sneaking suit from MGS2 is called the skull suit, this might just be a coincidence since they don't really look alike. 
You can unlock Raiden's Metal Gear Solid Rising appearance by S-ranking all the main story mode missions. This is by far one of the coolest skins in the game and kinda solidifies Kojima's approval of the Rising games as part of the canon. Although this skin only has unique voice lines when holding up enemies in Ground Zeroes, Speak. Speak. It was given an electric speed boost to sprinting thanks to Raiden's cyborg body. The Grey Fox PS1 skin is also very similar to Raiden's in abilities but with the obvious visual differences. Sadly though, you can't use Raiden's Viro Blade as melee weapons in general like knives or stun rods were never implemented with their own category. Plus, for a few years this was the fastest skin in the game but since the Quiet FOB update she quickly replaced him as seen by the side by side comparison. Quiet is just so much faster. The Skull units are the fastest enemies as well, but sadly the Parasite suit doesn't have a canister upgrade that gives us the same movement buffs. In fact, Kojima wanted to implement a more complex weight system that would slow Snake down the more you carry, just like in Peace Walker. But as shown on screen, skins and weapons don't affect his movement speed. Though some exceptions are the swimming suits for the Mother Base soldiers and their perks that can sometimes buff different aspects of their movement. Ultimately though, this just gives them the same perks as Snake's movement buffs from his bionic arm, so not sure why you wouldn't just use him instead. Quiet and Pass have some interesting similarities, both being agents for Sypha and Skullface that were defeated by Big Boss, then turned into secret weapons by Skullface to once again try to kill Snake. They also both fell in love with their respective targets and try to save them by the end of their mission. The icon representing Pass in Peace Walker is the Morpho Butterfly, which is again used to symbolize her in the final cutscene of her story in The Phantom Pain. Interestingly, Quiet also gets a butterfly marking on her face through the parasite and is the symbol you unlock through using her as a part 9 mission. Not sure if it's the same type of butterfly, but still a parallel. Both characters' themes are also sung by their respective Japanese voice actors, since Stephanie Houston voices quiet in both English and Japanese. The patient and an expert saw my face. And even after both their final missions, Peace Walker returns to before Pass's boss fight so she's still on Mother Base, while the Phantom Pain lets you get back quiet by completing mission 11 6 times until it gets the prefix Reunion, but this can't be said for other features in the game. After defeating Skullface, Diamond Dogs takes the Halanthropus back to Mother Base, but eventually it T poses away with Eli and Psycho Mantis. Because of this, not many players really get to appreciate just how cool this thing looks for the short time you have it. Even when driving to the R&D platform, you can still see it peering out from the top. This is by far one of the best designed Metal Gears that heavily mimics Rex from the first game. And although it's not really a hidden detail, since I had to completely finish the game for some of the points in this video, I thought I might as well show off the Hylanthropus before he unceremoniously gets taken away. Kinda wish they didn't include Eli and the kids stealing it since we don't even get the cut mission 51 that would have been the official rematch. Plus, your Diamond Dogs patch also gets an actual diamond on it after the mission Shining Lights even in death, where Venom cremates his fallen soldiers into these diamonds. Huey also leaves the R&D room permanently after being exiled which leaves Mother Base completely empty of unique NPCs to interact with. There's five different bionic arm designs in the game with each having different powers and abilities respective to their names. The Hand of Jehudi being the more unique one since it can teleport people from a good distance away. But did you know there was four other bionic arm designs that were cut from the game? These were shown off in the game's official art book but sadly were never finished. With the exception of the Parasite arm which appears once you put on the armored canister. Although this one doesn't do anything, I think the actual arm could have given Snake the super speed we mentioned earlier, but who knows. Skullface has a very similar scar on the exact same area where Venom has his shrapnel, which has sparked theories that they're the exact same person, because everything Skullface says he's lost can also be applied to Venom. Then one day, aircraft came droning in from some far off sky. The factory was bombed. Some spies had told them we were making weapons. The last identity I had left were pulled from me. I have no country, I have no face, but I haven't lost my skull. In Ground Zeroes, enemies will say this about XOF. Lost. Every last one. 
but they'll ask the same about Big Boss if you interrogate them. Not to mention XOF is just a flip of Fox, which is what happens sometimes to text in dreams like the writing in Pass's room. Plus, Diamond Dogs is basically acting as an XOF for the real Outer Heaven. Both Venom and Skullface are just the cleanup crew for Big Boss that become demons for the trash they clean in his shadow. Which is why the final trailer of the Phantom Pain shows this progression into Skullface. But a counter to this theory is that Skullface's real appearance is shown off in the game's art book. Even if they aren't the same person, they still are undoubtedly linked, hence the Diamond Dogs logo found on XOF generators in OKB0, as well as all the other insane secrets about this and other topics we reveal in this video here.